All right, Bobcats, in this lecture, we're gonna go over spirometry. Uh, but before I get started, uh, make sure to hit that like button and then also hit the subscribe button if you haven't already done so. So uh, spirometry, this is a useful tool in order to detect changes in function within the respiratory system. So more specifically, we can determine or distinguish between obstructive and restrictive lung diseases using a spirometer. So uh, this spirometer is used and what the subject will do is they'll breathe normally and then they will forcefully um, inhale, forcefully exhale, and then we can then collect uh, data on those values. So the certain volumes of air that they were able to uh, breathe in as well as um, breathe out. So a couple of uh, different things, we're gonna discuss like some of those different terms, what we use for the different volumes, and then what the, capac the respiratory capacities are, we're just adding some of these different um, values and to determine what the uh, um, amount is. Okay, so using a spirometer, when someone is normally breathing, so just for me, just standing up here, there's air that's going into the lungs or within the alveoli, and then there's also air that's leaving whenever I exhale. So this little wave here, this is known as, I'm gonna write number one right here. So this is what's known as the tidal volume. So the tidal volume is just normally in, when you normally inhale, normally exhale. When you forcefully inhale, so this is, is gonna rise up, and then it's gonna come back down. So when you forcefully inhale, we're getting lots of air into the lungs, it spikes rapidly, and the term that we use to describe this is known as the inspiratory reserve inspiratory reserve volume. So the symbol that's used to describe this, it's called IRV. So you have IRV and then TV is for uh, tidal volume. So a typical value for tidal volume is 0 0.5 liters or 500 milliliters. For the inspir inspiratory uh, reserve, a typical value, if you look at it from here to here, it's roughly about 3.1. So these, these um, numbers, these values that I'm uh, writing up here, these are just average male values. There's gonna be um, variation uh, between, between sexes, male and female. Okay, so we have the inspiratory reserve. So this is the air that we uh, forcefully inhale, and then we forcefully exhale. So as it goes down, so that's here, this is number three. This is known as the expiratory reserve volume, so the ERV. And a typical value for this is roughly 1.2. So then if you look at it, this graph, from here to this point, so number four, this is what's known as the residual, the residual volume, because this is what stays within the alveoli. So a certain amount of air has to stay within the alveoli to prevent it from uh, collapsing. And so this is just noted as RV, residual volume. And a typical value for this is roughly 1.2. Okay, so now that we finish the volumes, let's get into the different capacities. So the first one that we'll go over, it's known as the total lung capacity. And the symbol for this is TLC, because we don't want no scrubs. So what's used to calculate the total lung, we're just adding all of these different volumes up. So I'm just gonna put add, so we just add, so we just add all. And a typical amount is roughly six liters. 
So then you also have something that's known as the vital capacity. So the vital uh, capacity includes all of these numbers except number four. So number four, this is the um, residual capacity, the amount that uh, stays within the lungs. So if we add, if we add these values up, we get so 3.6 plus uh, 1.2. This is going to be 4.8 liters, and this is denoted as VC, vital capacity. So then the next one that we'll go over for uh, the capacities, you have what's known as the inspiratory capacity. This is denoted as IC. And we're just including the amount of air here. We include the tidal volume as well as how much we can uh, forcefully um, inhale. So for inspiratory, it's just value one plus value two. And a typical value that we would get, so uh, this would be 3.6 liters. So the last one that we're going to go over, it's what's known as the functional. functional residu residual capacity, so it's denoted as FRC, and a typical uh, value, so this we're just including both of these, so we just add both of these numbers up. So this would give us 2.4 liters. Okay, so that's going to do it for this lecture.